Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Vampire Survivors. It's not a full LP. Um, yeah, this isn't a full LP. Um, I'm going to put this into Friday Night Roguelikes because like... Actually, what does she need? I'm going to put this into Friday Night Roguelikes. I'm well aware that I'm striking while the iron is ice, ice cold. Um, because like, who's playing, you know, who is playing <laughs> Vampire Survivors now? It's, it's been a while since this game was relevant, and I can admit that. But, you know, what is my channel if not striking while the iron is ice cold? I don't want that one right now. Um, I've already been playing for quite a bit because this game is rather addictive, and I usually enjoy jumping in on a roguelike much, like, quicker. Um, normally I like to at least be able to do stuff in a roguelike, and technically this is a roguelike. Um, I'm aware that it's been a few weeks, months, since the last episode of Friday Night Roguelikes, but whatever, that doesn't really matter too much. Not to me, at least. Um... I wanted to have been really off about recording recently. You may have, you know, this is a great time because somebody outside is currently uh, doing the trash. Uh, okay, I don't think that can be heard. I just looked at my waveform. Um, sorry, I don't mean to smack my lips. I know that that can be bothersome to some people. Uh, yeah, this game's really good, uh, and I just wanted to play it a bit. It's very simple, and, um, like I said, I've been out of recording for a little bit. I haven't recorded in, like, a month, and I know that, that I say that all the damn time. Um, but I, I've recently, uh, uh, been doing things that have made it particularly difficult to record. That's actually part of why my, um... Oh, my uh, uh, Death Gambit playthrough, which, if you've been watching, my Death Gambit playthrough recently has uh, was recorded without audio. Uh, on purpose, this wasn't a screw-up on my part. Um, sometimes I'll do a Souls-like without audio. I think I did a few episodes of Salt and Sanctuary that way, and I did almost all of Blasphemous uh, without... Oh, damn, I shouldn't have gotten the duplicator. Because there's a free one on the level. Could just reset. Eh, I'll let it rock. It doesn't matter too much if I get every possible thing. Um, what was I talking about? Right, yeah. I mean, I guess, strictly speaking, it does matter if you get every possible thing, because, like, when you're playing a particularly hard roguelike like this, what you need is every possible thing to go correctly. You know, you need to play every part correctly on your part. You need to do everything right um, as a player, you know. And you need to have, like, a, a solid, valid, uh, method of play. I'll avoid leveling it up, at least. That's one thing that does kind of tick me off about playing, um, roguelikes, especially like this, because, like, eventually, you're, like, so just, like, done with it that, like, you want to be able to get back to where you were, but, like, if it's a game where you can't save, and usually it isn't, um, you just want to get back in and start again, but then you make mistakes and like, uh, you know, it's like, um, it's like that thing with, uh, what? Sorry, I'm just noticing this. The symbols for different weapons printed on these. Is that the secret? Do I need all of those weapons? Because I I've never like beaten this this level I don't think. Intriguing.
Um, yeah, I do kind of wish that this game had like a quick start that like you could just select all the stuff you wanted and load right in. And like, I'm aware that that would make things less special, but eh, you know. But yeah, this game's really cool, obviously. Um, when I first started playing this game, I was, like, so surprised that, like, it looked like this. Because this is... This very much feels like a Newgrounds kind of game, you know what I mean? This this has the feel of something made in the early 2000s. Like, if this had been made on Newgrounds, it would have just used a bunch of Castlevania sprite rips. And to be honest, I know nothing about, like, the history of this game, so, like... It honestly might have done that, and I just wouldn't know. Like, this could just be a thing that was originally a a fan game that then got turned into a real game, and they made original sprites for it. And I wouldn't know. And, like, that might have happened. But the game's really solid without it happening, so, you know. The music's good, but I've already seen that animation many, many times. I'll grab that because I'm just... A lot of goodies I'm leaving behind on the floor around here. But yeah, one thing that I have been noticing about this game as well is that a lot of people have been making, like, really high quality, really solid... Oh, boy. Uh, really high quality, really solid, like, clones or, like, rips of it. Yeah, take that. Um, like, Holocore, off the top of my head. And I was thinking, like, somebody should really make a Doom, um, wad of this. Uh, I've been doing this show for, like, three years now. No, not that long. But I've been doing it for a while. Um, and, like, the, f I want to say, like, the fifth episode of this show, of Friday Night Roguelikes, was when I played DRL, which is just Doom the Roguelike. Uh, and this really interesting thing happened with it. Doom is, you know, one of the most modded games of all time. It's very well known for getting modded and, and having modifications made for it and the such like. Oh, well, maybe I'll head north. Well, no, let's, let's go ahead and... Well, no, let's go north. I got the ring, mistakenly. Well, let's get that, actually. Um, yeah, so somebody made this game called Doom the Roguelike, and it's, you know, a Doom Roguelike. In order to combat their cease and desist orders, they changed the name to DRL. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go see about that, uh, that merchantman? Yes, in order to combat people, um, suing them, they... Instead, started calling it DRL. Um, sometimes D star RL. Or D asterisk IL. Um, and I, I'm not sure exactly when this happens. I think it was initially that no one cared that they, they left that game up. Because of the way that um, people usually are about, you know, Doom mods and Doom mods. But the thing is, is that because it used such... It didn't use original Doom assets, but it, like, made all these, like, copies of them, almost. I think that was why people took offense with it. Yes, this one. Oh, what the hell? We'll grab that. Ooh, clock lantern in there. Although, I guess I haven't noticed the, um... The ring spawn on this level. You love to see it. Anyway, so now it's hard to find the actual Doom roguelike. The thing is, is that the controversy that this generated... Made it so a lot of people went looking for the Doom roguelike just because this happened. 
Like, because... Oh, Mimics. Because this exact thing occurred, people were like, oh, they're shutting down the Doom roguelike? There's a Doom roguelike? Damn, I should go play that. I love Doom and roguelikes. That's what I said, right? Uh, and the thing is, is that it really doesn't have that that much to do with Doom, all things considered. And strictly speaking, you could make it about anything and just use those same mechanics um, of, you know, you're in space, you've got to shoot guys, you have to fight demons. You know, because the core concept of Doom, of being a demonic invasion that happens in space... And you have the interesting science fantasy stuff going on in the hybridization of, like, you know, Christian lore, mythology, and, like, magic and, you know, demon summoning and demon fighting with the fact that gunpowder has been invented and somebody put together this little fun toy called the shotgun and, like, chainsaws are real and space travel is real and, like, we can't go to Mars. Why? Because it'll take 18 months to get there in a spaceship? No, it's overrun by demons. Oh, that's an interesting problem. That's a cool core concept. And apparently the devs of Doom Roguelike thought that as well, because the devs of Doom Roguelike literally... Oh, here we go. Literally got a hold of... So what if I bring the garlic over to this? Does that do anything for you guys? The devs of Doom the Roguelike were like, you know what, we can do this without having it be Doom. And they did and could and, and, you know, did that. And they made this game called Jupiter Hell. So instead of you fighting demons in, you know, a roguelike sort of system. Uh, yeah, instead of you having demons on Mars that you fight using roguelike uh, uh, inputs... You fight demons uh, in and around Jupiter. And it's called Jupiter Hell. Uh, which, you know, if that's what's happened to vampire survivors, that would make a lot of sense. But one thing that was interesting is that the controversy around Doom Roguelike actually ended up generating a great deal of... See, here's, here's my guns on there. How curious. I haven't been reading a lot about this. Um... Pretty much anything, really. I've just looked up uh, what weapon combos I'm missing. Cool. Um, you know, I hope that people love it when I say um, because uh, I certainly say it a lot. They warn you about the flashing lights in this game at the start, and I hope that you heeded that warning because, damn, look at this thing. This is nowhere near as bad as it gets. This is like the halfway point, I would say. So, with uh, Doom Roguelike, you know, the controversy generated by the fact that Bethesda... Because I think id might have been okay with it, but when id got bought by Bethesda, and then, you know, Bethesda got bought by Microsoft, those licensees changed hands. You know, who was licensed to what, owned what, owned who, owned what was, you know, changed a lot. And as a result, people wanted to cease and desist the Doom roguelike. Um, Wooly Versus, who I'm a big fan of, made this fantastic, fantastic video about uh, what to do with a fan game, the proper way to make a fan game. And he told everyone, and, and there's this very good gif that if you know who Wooly Versus is, you've probably seen that gif. And if you don't know who it is, I might show you the gif and you might be like, oh, I've seen that guy, yeah. Because he's literally, he motions to the camera and, uh, uh, you know, to say, come near so you may hear the words that I speak. And then he says, shut the fuck up. We get it. You, we know that you want to share, you know, your grandma in the kitchen making our favorite food. But you need to shut the fuck up, you know. I know that your, your tasty grandkids want to come and get a tasty, tasty snack try out the, the delicious food that you've prepared for us with all of our favorite ingredients. But here comes that, that big nasty dog here to slop some of that up. So it's your job to say, shut the fuck up and close the kitchen door. You will eat when the food is ready. Um, the thing is, is that now I'm convinced that some people are doing this on purpose. Uh, there was this guy on, on Twitter who was like, all right, 
all right, uh, uh, Twitter, I've finally taken it into my own hands and I've remade Bloodborne because Sony won't do it. And, like, he posted him fighting Cleric Beast in Unreal Engine 5 onto Twitter. And, like, boy, is that a project that's going to get taken down immediately. Like, one reason that the Bloodborne PS PSX game, the, the Bloodborne demake, one reason that that stayed up is that it only covers either original things or things that were in the demo of Bloodborne. And while you... I don't believe you can get the demo for Bloodborne anymore, they did put that product up, specifically the demo, they did put that product up for free. And as a result, anything covered in it should be free as well. Uh, which is why... Which is one legal thing that the... Um... The demake is, is basing itself off of. So, uh... When you... So now that that developer... I'm blanking on her name... Uh, that developer is making a kart racer with Bloodborne based on the, you know, the Bloodborne kart meme. And, you know, she's just able to reuse all those old assets. And, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I'm jumping from topic to topic. Don't worry, I'm working on that. But I, uh... I'm, I'm just thinking about the concept of, like, using the controversy of, Oh, man, the man's trying to shut me down. And, like, manufacturing that in order to get people to, to play your next game. Because, like, I don't know if Doom Roguelike would have been as popular if it didn't have all of the licensing stuff with it. Because, like, something like Moria or Angband uses, uh, is a roguelike that uses a bunch of Lord of the Rings stuff. But either due to its age or something, it just never got as much uh, hype generated for it besides the fact that it's just, like, so old. It never got, you know, legal sizzle. Obviously, people love Angband and Moria. Um, like, I've played those on the channel as well, actually. Um, the first season of Friday Night Roguelikes, I wanted to cover some of my bases and be like, all right, what is a roguelike? Let's go play Rogue and see what all these other games are like. Okay, somebody now then made, you know, Moria based off of Rogue. Then somebody made Angband, you know, etc., etc. Alright, we are now about at the semi-typical critical mass for how much mess gets on screen. Let's go buy the cherry bomb if we can, I guess. I don't know. Oh, let's get Vento Sacro. I don't play with it enough. It'll help keep people off my back. Um, anyway, what I'm getting at here is that while this game may or may not have been a Castlevania fan game that couldn't have been sold, that they then, you know, turn into an original thing, I thought it'd be interesting if somebody instead put up a, uh, a Doom version of this game. Like, why couldn't you do that, you know? And the pistol just shoots around you in a circle. Uh, you know, the shotgun is a, is a blast. The, the BFG will shoot, like, one big, um, ball but it'll do so uh it'll do so very slowly like you could totally just make a a a vampire survivors like and then either you know take assets out of doom and legally i don't know if you should i don't think you can do this certainly not if you intend to sell it the fan games are a more gray area but Yeah. The regen is good. These are all things that help me survive. If I could have gotten the armor, that would have been great. I had this one run with this character, um... Where, like, I had armor, and I had regeneration, and I had the... Uh, lifesteal whip, and the lifesteal... Heart, and the laurel. And I combined the guns into one gun, and I combined the birds into one bird. And then I had um, picked up an additional thing that gave me resurrections, and I just had, like, so many resurrections.
and like everything was giving me life steal, everything was giving me health. I was regenerating health on my own. Like my healing was damaging people. Uh I could stun people and well now it's at 30 minutes so death is coming. Or is he? I've never gotten this far on this level. I believe this is the yellow uh the the level where the yellow sign event occurs. So if it gets weird and and meta gamey then I guess that would only make sense. Oh, there we go. Final Fantasy 6? Or 3, maybe? <laughs> yeah, okay. Now this is something. God, the background makes it very hard to track myself. Track, to be clear. Uh, yeah, I was thinking it'd be interesting if somebody just ripped a bunch of, like, either assets from Doom or assets from Doom RL and made a fan game that was, you know, just a, a Doom Vampire Survivors. This is fun. I'm gonna have to do this with another character at some point. Uh, I thought that would be great. And, you know, if it gets taken down, then you can use the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the drama generated by the event to promote your next fan game. Because, like, you know, the Doom roguelike devs literally were like, okay, we can't make Doom roguelike because legally they own the rights to the game called Doom where demons are on Mars and you fight them. Okay, we're making a game where demons are on Jupiter, like literally the next planet in the solar system up. Oh, boy. Yeah, one thing about the um, Laurel in this game is that it, gar it grants you invulnerability, but it also can combine with two of the rare items that spawn in certain levels at certain times. Hey! Great gospel. Yes. Oh, cool. That's the last relic then, all right. So, are we going to go back to the normal stage, and then the the Reapers will spawn in like normal? Because that was pretty awesome. I, I'm glad I got that on camera, actually. I haven't done that myself. The uh, All the uh, weapons going off does suck the tension out a little bit. Oh, big Reaper. Do I get to revive? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, that's rather silly, I think. <laughs> Trina Crea in Capella Magna. Boss Rash, cool. So what does that get me? Oh, I can random now. And I can level up every single weapon forever for real. Because that might be pretty cool. Um, I usually like to do more than one of these. So I, I really like playing as Arca just because I love his sprite. And I like Antonio because I love the most default character. And I love the Belmonts. Um, I'll put this in my Castlevania's playlist. So if you're watching it from there, or if you've seen any of my other playthroughs, let it be known. I love, I love the, um, the, the Belmonts. Uh, man, what do I even have? Oh, Boss Rash. That's new and cool. Oh, yeah, well, it looks like all the relics are here.
I'll do this for a bit. Just while I talk. I love the, uh... I think Allura Une is what they're actually called in Castlevania, but I think their proper name is German, and I think it's Alrune, I want to say. Alrune. Something like that. Anyway, I love those en enemies anytime they appear in any Castlevania. Though I don't like the, like, little lolly versions as much. Sometimes Castlevania sprite art will just go, like, crazy hard on just the randomest things. Like, the, the randomest, most atypical enemy will just ha be like... Hey, you want a crazy hot, like, <laughs> super sexy plant milf? And they'll just put that in a real Castlevania level. And you'll be like, sure, I guess. Let's do wings. Because at some point we're going to get it anyway. We're going to get them all anyway, by the looks of it. I wonder how we get out to get those things, though. Because this is new to me. I've never done this before. I'm definitely going to play more of this game, but at some point, you know, not necessarily now. Um, because this is certainly a game that I have fun with, but I can definitely get why this is something that would typically be consigned to, like, a stream. Um, just because, like, it is sometimes not quite the move in order to, you know, to make your viewers watch, you know, XD hours of this. Oh, I didn't leave a spot open for uh, Ebony Wings. That's okay. I should be able to grab it whenever I uh, level up the guns into one gun. One thing about the guns is that it is sometimes kind of hard to, like, aim. Because, like, you put out so much damage, but it's never in one direction. Yeah, that's one thing about recording the way that I do. Sometimes it's just, like, so hard to actually, like, find something where, like, it's both concise enough that I can, that I can, like, do a good job recording. It's a topic that I know well enough about, or that people will find interest in me, you know, uh, seeing for the first time. I forget what, what game I was playing where, like, people were like, oh, man, you've not seen this game before? I can't wait for you to. Sorry, I'm trying to time my, uh, my clock. I do love whenever the game, like, expects me to just do that. I think that's so cool. I love really atypical, you know, weird, uh, uh movesets like that, where it's like, oh yeah, you have to time it on the actual position of the clock. I think that's dope. I think that dude on Twitter who was like, yeah, I'm just going to remake Bloodborne by myself, a single developer, whatever, the power of Unreal Engine will make this more feasible, right? And like, dude, even if you're in, that, that's, that's one reason why I think it's like a fake. That's, that's one reason why I think it's fake. Just because like, it took somebody like two years to remake just the Bloodborne demo. Like four years, actually, now that I think of it. Like it was like four or five years, really. Um... It took somebody, you know, one developer, like, four or five years to remake, you know, just the Bloodborne demo in, you know, PS1 assets. And granted, you know, the fact that they are PS1 assets might make it a lot easier on you. Um, like, certainly that'll make it a lot more simple. 
when you have to model uh, uh, less complex things. But the thing is, is that, like, you still need to be able to model it. It's not necessarily going to make it, like, easy. You know, it's it's one of those things where, um... Like, you still need some talent, and you need to have an art style, and you need to be able to do that thing. But it is at least more simple. Maybe not necessarily easy. You know, to do something in a uh, less uh, complex art style. You know, you need to be good at that art style. It's not going to make it easy, but... Might make it doable. Man, I, um... I, uh, I was hanging out with my brother. Uh, and my wife. Uh, we were... This was, uh, last Thanksgiving, I want to say. We were... Yeah, that's, that's to be expected. Oh, I got this, though. We were, um... Back in town for Thanksgiving, and, uh... We were just playing on my old 360, because my dad still had it. It's useful for watching, uh, like, DVDs, so, like, he just, you know, has it. Um... Yeah, this is like last Thanksgiving, and uh, I had my Xbox 360 arcade edition of Symphony of the Night installed still, because that game's awesome, and I literally just like played through it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, or maybe this was longer ago, this had to have been longer ago. Um, yeah, I was literally just playing um, 360 Symphony of the Night, and my brother was like, wow, this looks like Tetris, and like, that hurt me, <laughs> that hurt. Is there anything I'm missing out of here? No, skip. I don't get this. I don't know what this means. And curse. And I think if I refund everything, then these will be cheaper. Yeah. Because they get more expensive, but there's only so much more expensive that they can get. Yeah, they aren't meant to be that expensive. They just bug out and, like, make themselves the value of every single piece of money you've ever picked up, ever. Um, also, Sarah just seeing, like, Castlevania being played that way. And was like, oh, man, this is what Castlevania is? Because all she knew about was just the, um, was just the, the NES games. Because that's what I've played. All she knew about was the NES games. And she saw that. She was like, damn, all right. And she ended up playing through the whole thing. Um, we bought it at home, though. Uh, but yeah, that's Friday Night Roguelikes. That'll do it. Uh, I would love to play more Vampire Survivors, but like... This is a game that's like $5. If you want to see more, I, rec I kind of recommend that you buy it. And I recommend that I do some actual work and, you know, play some games that are a bit more... Uh, uh, this is the thing. Because right now I'm playing a game that's actually popular, or was at least recently popular. You know, when I first heard about this game, I was like, I assumed that it had to be a shooter just because of, of the fact that people were talking about a new video game that I hadn't heard of. And I assumed it had to be a shooter, but I was like, wow. When this was revealed to be what what the uh, the game that everyone cared about was, I was like, damn, all right. Um, and like, I'm playing about something that's, I'm playing something that's new, modern and people like, and I'm like, I got to stop doing this. People won't like it. <laughs> the basis of my channel is that I play weird games and ancient games that nobody's talked about in decades. And <laughs> like, like, I'm just looking through what I, what I've played in the last year. Shadow of Mordor. That's almost 10 years old. Uh, Salt and Sanctuary. Also almost 10 years old. A bunch of 360 games like Halo, yeah, Halo 3 and 4, Halo Reach, Valkyria Chronicles, not a, a Xbox 360 game, but that is definitely a PS3 game. Yeah, to me, that's my that's my channel's brand, that I, that I play games from not last generation, but what was last generation, last generation. 
I play games that are at least two gens at a date. That's what I do. And when I'm now playing something like this, I'm like, I gotta stop. It's too modern. Even though it looks like this. <laughs> and it feels like a Newgrounds game. Um, I might play more just because, God, Vampire Survivors is fun. It's just really fun. But the thing is that when you're playing a roguelike like this, you know, it, it's a thing where you're going to be taking so many hundreds of tries just to get that one, one really good run where you have the right character and the right stats and you get lucky and get all the things you need really early on. And then you can spend time leveling them up instead of trying to get the next thing. Because like when you get the the Laurel, both birds, when you're playing as, what's her name, Pugnola, and you get the Laurel and both birds and the Clock Lance, and then you get all the relevant um, items that you need really early on, and then you can go and pick up the extra items so that you can have you know, eight or nine uh, uh, accessories instead of the normal six. And then um, you get the the rings and the left and right. Uh, and you get all the things you need and then you can upgrade the birds and, and free up a space and get another um, weapon and you can combine the guns and, you know, free up another weapon. And then you can try to fight death. Only then can you attempt to fight the real death. Uh, and like, let's also like, take a look here. You can do this for every character and there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. There's 20 characters in this game and there's like 10 levels and you can play the ones with and without hurry or hyper. And then there's all the like all the different combinations of weapons. Even if you're only going to use the same ones, like you're going to combine the guns and the birds. And then you also need to have uh, Laurel and Clocklance. Which I, I'm now noticing I've never actually been able to fully upgrade. They're just so far apart. Huh. I should uh, work on that. Never upgraded the... Uh, all the later characters, I haven't upgraded their things either. Hmm. Well, anyway. Uh, in addition, then there's all the cards. And like, normally I imagine you would take the cards where like you Gemini and you can duplicate the guns and the, and the birds and get more. Uh, but you just, you would fight so hard just to get that one run. And then that might not win you it. You know, if you if you don't have that character upgraded enough, that might not win you it. And like you want it so bad, but like just not good enough. And then you're gonna you're gonna lose that run and you're gonna go right back in and you're gonna be like, oh, if I can just get right back there, but you got that one in a hundred chance and you're gonna do another hundred runs before you get a chance like that again. And like even if you got those exact same stats right immediately afterwards again that time. The, the fact that you got so close and botched would fry your nerves so badly that you'd be like, and you would just, you would drop the ball completely. And I guess at its core, that's what a roguelike is. That's what we play these games for. We play it for that feeling. Because when you get there, when you actually are like, you are so close and you make it and you're like, that means something, you know? It means something. It's, it's why the genre of roguelike has... That's why so many roguelike games don't change, you know, because people will, <laughs> you know, people don't play Zork anymore. And if people play Zork, it's usually for like the novelty of it, because now we can graphically interface things. We don't need to, we don't need to make a, a game that reads you a book because we can just render something. We don't need to say, you know, we don't need to have a terminal that writes out before you, you see this thing and you see a castle and it's made of brown stone and there's a dragon sitting on top of it. We can, you know, use a, a we can use graphics to put brown stone and, and, and a castle that's made of it and a dragon in front of you. And so people don't play text adventures very much anymore, but people do still play roguelikes, even though they use the same crappy terminal readouts because of this feeling. <laughs> It's something that you only get from here. Ah. Uh, I guess that's why I started this show, you know?
you know, for this feeling. This is why I go in time and again and I'm like, yeah, all right, let's go get hurt again. Let's start a new roguelike again. Let's play a new roguelike again. Ah, all right. Uh, I'll cut it here. I've been Alfred. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I probably could have done another run while I was rambling, but at the same time, I can't ramble as hard if I'm also trying to play. So eh, who knows? I hope this was enjoyable. I haven't been recording in a little bit, so. Um, but I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye.